after schools shut their gates from Friday afternoon, they will remain closed for most pupils, for the vast majority of pupils, until further notice. Hello, we are the Edgy Futurists. I'm Dan Fitzpatrick. I'm Ben Whitaker. And I'm Stephen Hope. The podcast by educators for educators, the Edgy Futurist Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of the Edgy Futurist Podcast in partnership with our good friends at Text Help. We're going to be discussing some really important contemporary issues surrounding school closures, distance learning, how we can work together as educators to support each other through this process. We're delighted today to be joined by Rachel Courtup from, uh, it's a primary educator and Google certified trainer and innovator. She's a passion for integrating G Suite for education into learning environments and actively supports teachers to use technology to transform their teaching. Yeah, Rachel has five years of primary teaching experience, including computing curriculum designer and head of digital learning. She has experience in both private and public schools in Melbourne and London. She loves training teachers so they feel confident to use technology in the classroom. Rachel and I were at Sweden 19 for our Google Innovator Academy, and you might recognize her face from the Google Demonstrator stand where she did absolutely loads of training sessions with another friend of the podcast, John Neal. Rachel tweets at tech underscore Miss C. The podcast by educators for educators, the Edu Futurist Podcast. Rachel, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is a really, really interesting episode of the podcast. Uh, I, it's just what a week it's been. What a week it's been. And we started the podcast there with the announcement from Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the UK. Uh, yes, last night, so we're recording Thursday, he announced that last night that all schools are going to be closed in the UK from Friday afternoon. Um, how's the week been for you? It has been the busiest week. <laughs> uh, I don't think any of us could have been prepared for what was in store uh, this week. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's, it has been, we talked about before we came on air, it's it's unprecedented, isn't it? It's like, I've never in my whole, like, I'm not even, I don't feel like that old, but I've even <laughs> talked to like older people than me and they think it too, like just been in this position where we have, um, where we've seen this, where wholesale school closures, uh, business changing, lockdown and uh, all the stuff to do with supermarkets and this and that and the other. And we, we're we re- uh, really grateful for you to coming on today to talk about some of the stuff that um, we're, we're doing as educators and maybe what educators can do to support their learners and support each other through the process. And uh, yeah, so do you want to give us a little bit of an update of some of the stuff that maybe you've been doing on uh, on this week in, in or and beyond and before, sorry, to be able to talk about distance learning and all that kind of stuff? Can, can Sorry, Rachel, before you do that, and I know Dan, you tweeted, so I'm going to say this as well, the school doors are closed but schools are still open and for learning. And yeah. I think that's that's definitely something we're going to touch on. And sorry, Rachel, to jump in, but I think school the buildings are closed, or the majority of buildings are closed, but the learning is still open. And I, I think, think that's, that's right. And that's what the just half an hour ago, the Boris Johnson did another press conference. And one of the first things he said when he came out was um, that he's really grateful for the country and for students for putting education on hold. And I thought, wait a minute, like, like my students aren't putting education on hold mm. we've been working our backsides off for the last 48 hours to make sure that their education is not going to be put on hold <laughs> and i'm sure you've been doing the same rachel yeah i think that's a really good point you know education's not stopping just because the schools might be closing and you know whilst some stills are still one while some schools are still going to be open you know, the majority of them are going to be closed, but we are still working remotely in lots of different ways. And we're seeing lots of teachers preparing in many different types of forms, uh, whether that's digital or offline packs. Uh, There's a lot of uh, support going on from teachers uh, and support staff in schools. I think it's also worth mentioning here as well that a lot of schools are physically staying open to support the uh, the children of key workers and uh, which which is amazing because they're they're all doing those key workers are doing a, a great job in keeping the country running. Uh, uh, shout out to all the people in the NHS and delivery drivers and the people that are that are, are really making this um, makes makes you feel proud to be. I know you're not British, but, but to be in Britain, do you know what I mean? It makes you proud that people are coming together, and the same is happening all around the world of people working together to support each other. And I think that's that's been evident through some of the stuff that's been going on. I know I that think- you're. Go on, sorry, jump in. 
I think that's one of the key things that I've seen, uh, especially sort of last week and leading into this week, is the amount of teachers, ed tech companies that are just getting behind and offering up their services to support each other in any way, shape or form, whether that's through webinars, training, um, sending emails out, jumping on hangouts and meets with each other. It just goes to show that we all actually are in this together and we do want to help each other. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that, isn't it? And I suppose it might be worth mentioning here about that, the fact that all those people that are supporting each other are actually um, uh, that are supporting schools and supporting students are actually supporting each other in the background as well. So some of the stuff that's been happening with the uh, <clears throat> the Global GG staff room that Kat, Lamin and Abed and the team have been putting together, I know you've been involved in that, has been a case of supporting those who are supporting others as well. So um, that's been lovely, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been really nice. I think one of the hardest things this week um, is that being sort of an ed, ed tech trainer and having events cancelled has meant that all of the work that I'm doing now is all online. It's all remote. Um, and you just suddenly realise that you don't have that face-to-face -face human contact with colleagues that you'd see or teachers and just those people that, you know, just having someone to smile and laugh and chat about something, <laughs> there's none of that. And uh, the gig uh, staff room has been really helpful to be able to jump on. They're on various days during the week and at various times. And it's an open chat um, just for teachers to be able to get together online, talk about problems, ask questions without judgment. And I think that's so important um, and really important for schools as well. Um, in the midst of closing, we need to think not just about the students and how we're going to teach them online, but also how we're going to support the teachers uh, that are going to be working remotely and, and suffering problems as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think one of the, the big categories there are the teachers who know something about remote learning already. So, and I know we're going to get into how remote, how, the technology and cloud-based tools that we use do are supporting remote learning around the world right now. But um, I just can't help but think those those teachers around the around the world who who know something about Google for Education, about um, Microsoft three six five, and how those platforms can can assist learning, and are now either are having to speak up, they're having to try and transform their schools. Um, and, and I guess the big questions are: Are they being heard? And if they are being heard, um, are they are they are they getting the support that they need? Because they're, they're, a lot of them are going to be thrust into the centre of of how the school is going to be running now. Uh, and a lot of them, also on the other side of the coin, could be frustrated to say that their institution could be doing a lot better than they are. Um, so I guess that that environment that you've created there is going to be a massive support to to those. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because often, you know, when it's small stage and it's looking at digital strategies being implemented within a school, it's very easy for schools to think, okay, well, that's our person that we go to. But suddenly when it's a whole school project and trying to get everything done online and teachers aren't well equipped in training and haven't been prepared to teach remotely, this is a whole new world. Um, and I know that all of those that are in roles of head of ICT or head of computing, head of digital learning are all that go-to person. And ultimately, they are the ones that are struggling right now because they're the, they are the sole owner of trying to be responsible for leading this vision and leading the training within their schools. I, I I, I'm going to just move it away from technology. We will come back to it. But do you know when Gavin Williamson talked about silent corridors? Did he mean this, do you think? <laughs> the, the do you want to just say who Gavin Williamson is? Just for uh, oh, oh, yeah, sorry, oh. for the 60% for the of the audience of, in the US. So he's the education sec secretary. Have you, been, have you been looking at the statistics? I have, yeah. We're, 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 some, we're doing some work today. I know. I know. <laughs> 60% of our listenership, well, actually, it was 62 when I looked, so yeah, just just saying, um, is in the US and, and, the, and the Americas. Now, um, <laughs> Gavin Williamson uh, and some of the traditionalists in education in the UK talked about uh, that we should promote um, non-mobile phone use in, in, in schools and also um, silent corridors. Well, actually, we've achieved it pretty quickly, so he's doing quite well. There'll be no <laughs> mobile phones in, in, in schools over the next four weeks and beyond, and also the corridors will be really silent. So well done, <laughs> Gavin Williamson. And actually, 
I thought it was going to the traditional model. What I didn't realize is actually he meant, he, he was talking about education technology, that actually we can create silent corridors and remove mobile phones from schools if we move learning online. <laughs> Maybe this is what I meant. Maybe Steve, maybe you've been super controversial. On our, on our <laughs> Do you know what? We could even go, we could even go there and say that there, there was a there was an argument about like teachers versus tech and whether that was a, a good thing, whether teaching was in, was was should be very streamlined and done this way, or whether whether we should integrate technology into education. And I think it's really interesting at the moment. I've uh, when you were talking there about the the people that are, are doing training and uh, that are supporting the schools and kind of being the pe the point people in in schools and colleges, um, I know all of us on here have done like countless amounts of training, whether that's online or whether that's face to face. And some of these pe the people that are that are doing this involved in this training have <laughs> they've not even looked at it before, and it's been thrust upon them. And it's and and sometimes that's a uh, that's not a great place to start from, but these people are now desperate to realize that, hold on a minute, I've got to continue learning somehow. And, uh, and it's not, it's not like, I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll do traditional chalk and talk and we'll put packs out. And I know that some people are having to do that way, but there's a lot, a lot of schools that are using technology, aren't they? To, uh, to deal with the issue of remote learning and distance learning. So I, I don't know if, I don't know if we could talk about some of like, maybe some of the examples of how technology is helping uh, with this remote learning, how it's going to happen when the physical building might be closed, but actually um, we can make sure that the learning continues. Yeah, I think one of the big benefits uh, that I've already seen with schools that are closed is the use of Google Meet. Schools are already being able to have contact with students and being able to check in with them um, and also just to make sure that they are doing okay uh, and to be able to share teaching practice still with them you know if if we are just sending home packs to students and we're not involving um platforms like google meet then we're not going to be able to actually engage and teach the students um actively yeah completely yeah. we were just before we went on air i think me and steve before you came on ben we're talking about how anybody who's two weeks into a pgce can tell you that just sending a, a pack home and a student working on a pack is not teaching and it's not learning um you, you need that interaction you need that feedback and you need that the the dynamism that comes from being able to teach and and sending the pack home can't do that and i think we're gonna i think i think in a few weeks this is when it's going to hit a lot of schools i think those schools who are who are, are getting prepared and who like I'm going to use my school as an example. So over the last 48 hours, we have been working our backsides off to essentially put a system in place that would probably normally take the best part of a year. And I think we're, we're we, and I'm really proud to say that we've, we've successfully um, done that. And I think that's not, that's down to the people. I think, I think normally, and, um, and Steve's great at talking about this, but not normally when you, or shifting an organization over to something like that, you're going to have your resistors, you're going to have the people who are on board, and it's going to take a while. You've got to build those relationships and, and move people along with you. In the past 48 hours, I've seen in my institution that everybody wants to be on board. Everybody, because they care about the kids, they care about the education, They those natural feelings of, of being scared of the technology, being scared of, of change, they've just put it to, to one side and they're, they're really going for it. So we, we've, we've managed to do that. And so on Monday morning, we, we, most of our students are going to be following their normal timetable, are going to be being taught in real time using Google Meet by teachers, and are going to be doing um, assignments through Google Classroom that can be um, that where live feedback can be given for the rest of that, that period. And I think those schools who are given, who aren't there yet, and 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 I'm not I'm not saying they're they're wrong. But it's just they're not there yet. We're we're all at different stages of this journey. But those schools who aren't there yet in a couple of weeks' time are going to have that question: that when they see those other schools teaching, but those other schools making progress, they're gonna they're gonna have that big question: like, why aren't we doing it? Why? Because essentially, if you're not doing it, you could be losing out on a full term's worth of work here because we're looking at closures maybe until the summer. And you're going to see some schools have a full term advantage over other schools because they're equipped with this stuff. And I think that's when leaders are going to turn to the staff in the school who look after this type of thing and say, why don't we have this provision? 
Yeah, I think as you say, Dan, you know, we're all in that period of uncertainty and change and we just don't know how long this is going to last for. And I think thinking short term, which we know that there are some schools sort of thinking, okay, it'll just be two weeks and, you know, a paper pack will will suffice. But if we aren't and it's long term, then why aren't we preparing them now? You know, we need to think about you know, the way that we share the resources with the students and assign it and, you know, how they're going to complete these tasks when they're at home um, and, you know, assessment and feedback, which is a huge part of our teaching practice in the classroom. You know, we want to still be able to continue that when students are working remotely. And I think the biggest challenge that teachers are going to face, not not so much the first week when they go remote, but over the second and third and ongoing is that motivation element and how we actually maintain student motivation whilst they're working remotely and don't have peer-to-peer engagement yeah, yeah. And, and and how we're going to keep motivation and I know it was a bold step and I think it was a brave step and, and probably the right step from the government in fairness around the postponement and cancelling of of major exams but actually how do we maintain motivation around learning when students now know that our education system gears them up to endpoint assessments in, in May and June, and now they're not going to happen, how do we transition out of this period? And also, how do we motivate those learners to continue to want to drive when actually we're set up as an education system to then say, you know what, we're just built for passing the exam then, and and, and then you stop for the summer? <laughs> that, that's going to be a matter. It's not only what we're going to do when we're out of of organisations, what we're going to do to transition back will be a massive challenge as well, I think, to re-engage learners and continue to drive for the sake of learning, not the sake of the exam. Yeah, definitely agree there. I, I think, think that's... Yeah go, yeah, go on, Mitchell. I think that's that's the interesting thing is that it is a pivotal moment that we're having now, seeing the shift of integrating technology and being used remotely. We're seeing schools that maybe haven't been using technology to suddenly moving completely remotely and being digital. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see sort of how that shifts back when schools do return um, and whether that makes a, a difference or not. I know that we were having a conversation again before we came on air. Maybe we should have saved some of these conversations when we actually came on air. But we were having a, we were having a discussion um, before you came on, Rachel, about um, the teachers that or some support staff that have said, oh, it's all right, because when uh, when we come back to school as normal, we can delete all those apps and we won't need to use them again. Uh, and it was just like, oh, wow. Um, is that what's going to happen? Or um, are we going to change the culture so drastically and students are thinking like this? What 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 it, what it made me think here is that where Steve was talking there about our schools and colleges are geared up for that endpoint assessment and actually we changed this ongoing formative assessment um, a few years ago to become more summative and we got rid of AS levels and and we put we put it to final A levels and and all these kind of things and the final GCSEs and nobody could take them early what it what it what it it made me question is that really we probably should do more formative assessment that is not all wait until the end of year 11 or wait until the end of year 13. We should probably be um, be doing that thing that everybody's been saying for years and years and years, which is that assessment should be ongoing. It should never be summative. It should never be terminal and linear. Maybe if we were in that position now, we wouldn't have to cancel exams. We wouldn't have to give people predicted grades or whatever else is going to happen because nobody really knows what's going to happen with that. We're not going to have to give people unconditional offers for university or whatever else because um, we've done the ongoing uh, formative assessment. And I think that's a that's a, uh, a a big issue, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I'll stun you into silence or bored you to sleep. But <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm literally like I'm on my phone like trying to respond to emails from staff at school who are, who are still trying to get a grip of this stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah, I wasn't ignoring you, Ben. And and, and I think that's a, a point as well, Ben. Sorry, to, we will come back to that. But it's not too late that actually, yeah, yeah. yes, schools might be closing tomorrow, but even if you haven't started your journey yet. It's not about a sales pitch, but actually there's so many people out there on social media and in platforms that are willing to give the time up, the, the stuff we've cut. I know there's loads of stuff from, from the training providers from Microsoft and Google and Apps Events and EdTech team. There's free stuff out there. Even if just you as an individual want to drip feed some of those tools and even try them, even if it's not for this period, you're not too late. There is a time to still 
engage uh, in the, in it and, and reach out to people like ourselves and Rachel and beyond because it, you, you're, you're not alone. It's fine. We'll, yeah. we'll the, the support is there. Definitely. Yeah. And I think the key thing, and Kat Lemon um, has really nailed this on the head, is that regardless of where you're at, the main thing at, at the initial step is to consolidate what you're doing. You yeah. know, you need to get online and just teach. Do what you're doing now. Don't try and do a hundred things at once because it's just not going to work. You know, try and do what you're doing now and then slowly drip feed those things in. You know, try something new and and just introduce something new, but make sure you sort of have a rough idea in place of how you're actually going to integrate and go forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, can, I feel like we should come back to what I said because, like, you guys just just didn't listen to me, and Dan's 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 emailing, and Steve changed the subject. Like, like <laughs> I, 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 I'm 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 upset at you guys. Go, go back to the one. Go on, then. go on. Then. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, should we do? <laughs> Dan stuck his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, mate. Love you. We, are, we are on we are on video now, by the way. Everybody can catch it on YouTube. So we have seen that Dan's taken his uh, his headphones off. <laughs> and every time you look down at your phone, I've just realised I were doing that earlier as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's that, that that concept of assessment is what I was meaning, and then that that idea that this whole thing. But I'm I've been talking to people who um who have been preparing really hard for their Year Eleven exams, and they, they were they were they were working really hard. And uh, now they're just told, yeah, your exams are cancelled. They don't know what that means. They've made an announcement that exams are cancelled, but they don't know what that means. Are they going to get the predicted grades? Those predicted grades might be lower than what they could have got in the end. What happens if they were higher? Is that fair? What's going to happen to colleges? Can they go into those colleges? What's going to happen to universities? It made me really think about this idea around formative assessment, and actually, we should be doing more ongoing than um, than this summative thing. Do you think it's going? Do you think it's going to force? The government off qual exam boards to uh, to rethink. I think it's an interesting conversation um, to have because I wonder just you know how teaching remotely, how much assessment is being thought about at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I suppose if 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 they're talking about um, learning and remote learning being the ability to watch and catch up on BBC bite-sized videos, there is no, in terms of what the message is so far, there isn't a, an option for, for progress checks and activities and engagement and, and, and assessment in there, unless I'm missing something, I, I don't see it. But at least they are, th for the first time, talking about remote learning as a term. Yeah. but They're, they're going to be streamed on iPlayer though, Steve. Come on. But, yeah. do, do, but but how 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 are the how are you going to assess it? Do you know that's my thing. Yeah, sorry, how, well, 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 and, and as well, Ofsted. Uh, I know it, it's not all about that, but Ofsted when they're coming in and observations are coming in, they're not coming in and asking asking uh, how much learning have you got through. They're not asking how many videos have you watched or how many lessons have you done. They're asking they're checking progress, aren't they? They're checking do people understand what they what they've been shown do they can they do it can they prove progress over time watching a video and doing some some videos at some learning like that isn't doing that doing a, a final assessment is not showing that you understand something and it's gone into your long-term memory it says that you can pass an exam and now what we're saying is there's like those exams don't even matter anyway that's that's for me what what that what that announcement's made and that and it, it upsets me a little bit maybe i'm a bit too too passionate about it but it, i think about friends and family that are that are, that are in this position and and, it, and it's all because we have this reliance on this end point assessment uh it, it just feels um just feels a little bit wrong yeah. okay i'm off that sort box now let's uh let's uh think, let, let me join there i think it's fair i think let's be fair as well and say that um our government is are in a really difficult position aren't they yeah. they don't they don't know when this is going to be over they they don't know i mean if they knew it was going to be Mid June, could, would they do this? Would they do assessments from mid June to mid July? Who knows? But they don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a really difficult position. That, but, but, but your point is still valid in that the the emotional impact that that students are going to have. And I was I was in a, a, a help leader year eleven assembly this morning, where it was like it was like straight into school. Let's talk about what happened last night. Um, and th it was emotional. It was emotional. We had students year eleven students crying in that assembly we had we had members of staff 
sobbing, crying, and it was a really, really somber fifteen minutes that we had in that in the hall. And 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 it, you know what? I thought there's going to be some students here going to be like no exams. There was nobody like that. Nobody, not one student was was happy because they wouldn't have to sit in the exam. Um, I think I think there will there will be some people that that are taking it that way and let's burn all the books and not worry about it. But I I think genuinely most people won't be. I think I agree with you, Dan. I think most people will be genuinely upset that they've worked hard, they've prepared for this, most of them. And I think that tells us that there's fundamentally, um, and you're right about we're in a difficult position. The government, I don't think, had any choice but to do what they've done. But does it highlight the problem of end term assessment? Is what is it, I suppose what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely. yeah. And, and I suppose thinking about thinking about it, I think one of the things that we've we've had to do is that um, thinking about upskilling. And I, I wonder if you have got any ideas about that we can share on here. I know that we'll put some stuff in our show notes and whatever else, and I know that we'll talk about bits of stuff as well. But are, are there any things that you um, want to suggest that, that that people can do for schools and colleges that are wanting to upskill their staff to be able to support remote teaching? Yeah, so there's lots of resources out there. And I think the key thing is to try and go to those top reputable places because you just have all of the resources in one central location. Um, Google have been fantastic and released their um, COVID-19 resource site that's got all the information there. Um, they've even added a distance learning tab to the Chromebook App Hub now, which then features uh, the different apps and what they're doing to support remote learning as well. So everything's in that one central place. There's training available to work through there, um, as well as Text Help um, have got their remote learning site. So text.help forward slash remote hyphen learning. There's a whole range of playlists there to showcase how you can use the tools, uh, which is fantastic. Because yeah. I, th I think as well, it's, it's worth, sorry for me jumping in again, I know I've just been on my soapbox for a bit, but thinking about the text out stuff, one of the one of the um, the issues that's come up in, in the training that I've been talking about, I said, this is all well and good for those people who can access this learning um, and are, are okay, the students that can just get on. And uh, here's how to get on a meet and here's how to do your work through classroom and they don't need that that physical support but the accessibility features of the of the text help stuff actually will be able to help students who who might not find this easy um, yeah. and it's not as straightforward as because they haven't got the support in a classroom so I think that's important isn't it and I think as well the integration with Google Classroom with text help just makes it that one bit easier you know it's not a separate app that you need to go and use it's all built in to Google Classroom all of the tools make any creation of resources. Um, if you're still working through doing digital, you know, doing worksheets and wanting students to be able to complete them digitally, then there's those built-in options to be able to do that. So it's that sort of substitution aspect of using technology, but it is that first step um, in making the transformation of, of using technology. And, you know, with so many tools available, you know, in maths, writing, um, I've been using RyQ myself um, and I found not only has it sort of made me type faster, but also just to be able to work for a constant period of time. So I think when we talk about motivation, I think that's a huge aspect of really trying to encourage students to use these tools uh, to build up that motivation whilst they're working remotely. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, think, I think for primary kids, when you look at Read Write as a tool, and and the pet and, and the teacher might not be there because when we talk about remote learning, it's not always going to be synchronous. It might be asynchronously. And and the, that's a the big word for you, Steve. <laughs> you can you can tell I've been writing all the strategies for 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 a lot of organisations, can't you? And and, and, and a differentiation between it. Uh, <laughs> that the bits where if there's a misunderstanding or misconception, that they can use those tools to start to create the the the, the picture library and the definition all in a separate document and it does it for them and it starts to identify through images and 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 things like that and and i think that's massively powerful that it's that inclusivity and the accessibility for 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 everybody yeah i think that's that's the key thing steve it's for everyone a lot of people think okay well this is just for our accessible students and it, and it's not it you know the great thing about text help is that it helps everyone yeah you know in in so many different ways yeah 
Yeah, and 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 even just a simple Joe looking at dyslexia and Joe things like Joe screen masking that some people say, no, oh, we've got to, we're going to have to print this and we're going to draw off the workbook. And I have said, let's keep it online. Don't worry. There's a help guide, and we've done all of that. We've got Google sites created for 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 all the the, the Illuminate group where it's like, right, click on your screen mask, and then you've got your overlays and your and your opposite and everything else is on there it, in in the in the browser, and it works on anything. So you know, yeah. we we haven't got the resource for the paper. We haven't got that much in yet because we're talking thirty thousand students. Let's just do what we can do to make sure yeah. it's accessible when when they leave. I think the math stuff's there as well, isn't it? And and a lot it of people is. will have had that conversation. And I know we talk about this quite a lot when we talk about text help tools, but there's no there's no reason why students can't complete maths and science with complex formula. And um, that that stuff's all baked in as well, isn't it? So it, it genuinely does do that. And that's for all students. It's not just for those people with accessibility needs. It's those people who need to make maths digital or they need to assess their writing through RIQ or whatever else, don't they? And I think with with Equatio, one of the great things is I was um, on a call earlier with my friend in Canada and I was dem demonstrating it for her and saying, you know, you can create these resources, push them out through Google Classroom and your students have their own copy of the 3D shapes that they need to edit and they give you that copy back. So you don't need to take a whiteboard home with you because school's closing tomorrow and you won't have any of those resources because you can do it all through the math centre in Equatio. Yeah. yeah and I th Go on, Steve. I was just going to... I just think it's so powerful and I think in this in this day and age, we, we've been doing it, a lot of schools have been doing it, a lot of colleges have been doing it for so long. But I just think it's so... You know, if we are moving to remote, that these tools are available for free you know, through the process at the moment during the, in the tough times we're having... Get it used, get it practiced, and 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 it can make a massive difference to some of your students. And if it can, and it can support, then so be it. You know, let let's help out everybody because we're opening for those vulnerable students. But actually, some of those vulnerable students might not make make it in if if there's restrictions in terms of getting in and they can't get transport in. How can we, if they are vulnerable, and they have um, SEND and and they need the support and they can't get into those those schools? Well, actually, let's bring the learning to them still, and there is still that option to do that. And I think that's what needs to be remembered as well. Yep, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think it might be nice to to talk a bit about um, kind of the adoption model adoption models of of technology because you when you were talking a few minutes ago, Rachel, you mentioned kind of how the distant learning um, could be used for that substitute level level of the you know the SAMR model. Um, so within the SAMR model, you've got the the fact that tech is as acting as a substitute, um, and then the, the augmentation, the modification, and the redefinition stages. I think it, I think it'd be nice to just go down the avenue of if we're going to use it as a as a substitute at the moment, where could it go from that? Could it could it develop into those different stages? And and I guess the ultimate question is, could could we in the next few months discover that teaching online is could be better than teaching in person if it oh, does oh. reach oh. <laughs> <laughs> if we do reach that redefinition stage um are we going to want to stay at home yeah I, th I think it's a really interesting interesting thing because digital strategies is obviously something that all schools sort of have in place and and have had in place to some degree you know there's always been some kind of drive of use of technology in various forms and I think now even more we're starting to see that schools are having to put a quick fire approach um, in place to support remote learning. You know, as Steve and Dan touched on earlier, we've, you know, had to put plans in place in the matter of two days that usually takes years for schools to properly implement an action. Um, and one of the ways that a lot of schools think about integrating technology is through systems like the same R model um, and TPAC as well. And it's really important with the same R model that it's not just a ladder of the steps of substitution is, is a terrible level of use of technology and that we're only ever trying to reach redefinition. I think that's a misconception that a lot yeah. of teachers can can fall into. Mm. Um, I went on training recently 
and we were told about the same our model being referred to as a swimming pool and I really liked that analogy because the idea is that substitution is that shallow end of the pool and the redefinition is the deep end now even if you're a confident swimmer you're never going to stay in the deep end the entire time you're always going to be swimming in and out and I think that's a really key thing to remember when we think about technology. So I think, you know, substitution, if that's where you're at right now, don't, you know, don't think that's that's a bad thing because it is important that we start somewhere. And especially for those that are hesitant to use technology, it's better that we see them substituting than not using using the tech at all. Mm. I, I've, I've seen, I, I, I think I've seen some great practice um, in Scotland um, so some remote, like like, like up in Canusi and, and, and up there, that some of the colleges are delivering curriculum remotely um, into the schools. Um, so they're looking at the hires, obviously the way that it works in terms of your, your normals and your, your, your hires in terms of the, the school system, that they don't have the, the necessarily the, the level to teach that. So they get the colleges and universities to deliver that in and the, the kids never leave the school. So remote learning and, and also teacher shortages in countries so i know that um been doing some work um with some schools in sweden where they're struggling with um foreign language speaker uh, teachers actually this the the, the the students want to learn it but if they've only got four teachers how could you deliver this mechanism going forward that we've now set up when there is this school sh- this this skill shortage in terms of teachers that they're saying people are leaving the profession will this be more of the case where you're delivering in a classroom, you might have 30 students, but actually you might have a 1,000 students from elsewhere tapping into that great uh, resource in regards to just a normal lesson. That, you know, that's a substitute in a way. You know, you're not massively changing things, but it's using technology really well mm. to, to, to get over some barriers that potentially could be there and are there at the moment. Definitely. I think I think people do do uh, automatically think that it's a continuum that has to be uh, you have to get up towards that other end, don't you? Um, and that's and that's that's because we're uh, we're teachers and we learn through Bloom's taxonomies and we learn through hierarchy of needs and everything's about going up the uh, up the scales. Um, but I th- I'm hundred percent with you. I think it's absolutely right that sometimes it's cool to state substitution because that's relevant. And sometimes, and I, I also think that the uh, non-technology, it, people make me laugh because they think they say to me, uh, oh, you, you just want to use Google for everything. Yeah, well, sometimes I do. But actually, I, I do like a good old-fashioned discussion. I like it when people talk. And I like it when people get out of the seats and we might do some kind of, how do you feel about this? And they, and they have agreement and disagreement. I don't use I don't use a Google form for that. I don't use a have to do that through Hangouts Me. I do it because that in person being with a teacher, um, having a, a physical discussion is is, is ab- as important as being able to use a Google form and being able to use slides, isn't it? And Ben, I think that's a really valid point that you jump into. Is that uh, with schools going remote, it's important as well that they think about how they're going to support their students in taking time away from the computer as well within this in within their timetable that they encourage the students to have some kind of daily task or a choice board that they use across the week or across a day to complete tasks uh, whether that's go and find uh, as many objects within your house for each letter of the alphabet or go and find and collect all of the red objects or all the blue objects and put them all together uh, to create a photo you know, trying to encourage those uh, activities that are not tech related as well are just as important as those moments that students are working online as well. Yeah, totally, totally agree. And um, it, we uh, we live like that, don't we? We don't live totally on a computer. We like I like going out for a run. I like uh, having a conversation, and 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 there's no technology in that. So students, students have got to be able to, in fact, actually, and we, we always talk on this podcast about preparing students for the world of work. There's going to be very few jobs where they're going to literally just be able to talk to a screen and, uh, or work at a screen. They're going to have to interact with people and they're going to need those softer skills. And they're going to need that ability to not just, not just do that for work, but also be able to switch off and, and relax and whatever else. I've only, I've only ever worked in one place where the, <laughs> 
they communicated everything through uh, a message. I, I, I laugh about this quite a lot that they had screens and I was sat next to somebody or sat across with somebody in the office and they, they sent me a message on Slack asking if I was going out to the pub at the end of the end of the end of the day. Uh, and like literally could have just popped up his head over the screen and said, uh, Ben, are you going out for a drink? But they put it on Slack because that's what they do. And so that's just 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 crazy, isn't it? We've got to get that that balance right. Yep. I think yeah. I think Matt, Martin Baum, we had him on how many weeks ago, how many months ago now. Imagine if everybody had that technology to just to reiterate if anybody missed it. They have an interface where students are looking on a screen and teachers are delivering and they use an algorithm to an artificial intelligence to then identify whether a student is engaging, whether they're disengaged. Imagine if that now had been pushed out to all these schools and we were de- delivering distance learning and we could tell whether students were struggling whether students were engaging and, and and teachers were using that technology. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. They, I think, what do they, do they call it? The wow room. Yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, it is good. And it's, it's, to be honest, things like that as well have been part of the conversations um, that, that we've been having over the last week in terms of using Google Meet and Safeguarding. And, um, and we kind of decided in the end to, um, to set it up so that students' cameras don't come on. Um, which I think is, is probably the best solution um, for, for where we're at at the moment in terms of safeguarding. Uh, but it, there was still part of me thinking, um, as a teacher, you want to be able to see the students' faces. You want to be able to see whether they're engaged. You want to be able to, to measure their reactions. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of those conversations going on. And um, a, lot of, a lot of people in rooms thinking, how do, how do, we, how do we drill down to the most the, the simplistic ways to use this technology so that... So that again, like like we're saying, it's not just um, it's not let's make this as complicated as possible because it's going to be already complicated for for a hell of a lot of teachers out there at the moment. But let's try and make it as simple as possible, and let's not try to change it up too much. But yeah. it's um, it's going to be interesting afterwards, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. After we're out the other end of this of this <laughs> outbreak, I still can't believe like even just saying that in my head there after we're, after we're on the other end of this outbreak. Sounds like something from a film. It does. Like the, it's like a, some kind of zombie apocalypse type thing. Yeah. I think as well, when you walk in the supermarkets and you see the shelves, it definitely does feel like you're in a movie. Yeah. and Or, or, or some war times and you're hearing people like the army are going into places and they're locking things down and you're rationing the amount of toilet roll that you can buy. And, and we laugh about it, but it, it's it's scary, isn't it? And I know that I was, when you were saying, Dan, in the, uh, uh, what's it called? Um in the assembly that people were visibly upset and it, it really got yeah. to them. I, I, I was delivering a briefing to staff today and explaining this idea that we've got to stick together and uh, that it's the kindness of, to each other that will get people through and that this idea of how we make sure that students can still have the great experience but also we protect the most vulnerable by allowing them to come in and all that kind of stuff. And I could visibly see in my staff that um, that that drive to want to work together and that that feeling of like i I heard somebody say today it's like a war spirit like when 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 the when the war happened and people came together and they supported each other it's just it's it's amazing even though in this in this tragedy and this this crisis that's 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 horrendous that people are then for the probably probably maybe even the first time they're knocking on the neighbor's door and checking that they're all right and uh there's there's an old lady lives across the road and you're getting you're getting them some some groceries or whatever else that if it it's amazing that it that it re- required that that pandemic to to come to this but also amazing what's coming out the other side of it as well yeah and supermarket rations um i'm just going to uh, bring the level of conversation down a bit but uh <laughs> Rachel, Rachel Rachel's ongoing <laughs> I was in Tesco's earlier and uh one, one of my <laughs> one of my guilty pleasures is uh tinned ravioli. Okay. 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 <laughs> tinned ravioli. <laughs> tinned, like seriously, like it's a it hey, hey big spender. <laughs> it sounds disgusting. <laughs> but like tinned ravioli on toast, amazing. But it's toast? But it's cheese. like it's like pasta, it's like double crab. <laughs> yeah, but you'd have like uh you have garlic bread with your pasta, wouldn't you? Can I just ask a question and bring it back to technology, though, Dan? Yeah. Did you use a self checkout? Our, our local mini Tesco doesn't have a self checkout. Oh, they're, they're up north. Where, where, they're up where, north where, near, the, near the wall. Don't forget. Where, 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 where ruined. It, it doesn't even use technology in the supermarket. Did you pay on your card? There isn't one. Did you, did, no, you pay, no, did you pay on your card or did you no, pay cash? He, he paid in, um, in threatening bits. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, tell us just oh, tell, tell us your story about double right, carbs so, gone. So I, I'm so I'm looking at the shelf. There's no soup. There's nothing. There's no. There's nothing else on the shelf apart from a, a case of tinned ravioli. Okay. <laughs> And I'm like, this is brilliant. This is brilliant. So I put six tins of ravioli in my mouth. <laughs> so, so the moral of the story is you're hoarding, you're hoarding Tim ravioli. They're only 55 feet each. So, uh... <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I get to the checkout and there's a, there's a young lad over me and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, you're only allowed to, the Tilson, you're only allowed to buy two of these at a time. That's like, Two two tins of ravioli. <laughs> just to, just, to, just, just to clarify, I'm not binge, I'm not binge buying these. I buy these every week. This is what I have for every meal: breakfast, dinner, and tea. Tin ravioli and cocoa pops. Sack the milk off. <laughs> anyway, on, on, on toast with rice, triple pasta <laughs> with rice. <laughs> no, no, I'm making up. Yeah, right. triple. Corn. Anyway. I know it's uh, but uh, bringing it bringing it back, to, Dan. Sorry, I'm going to bring it back to life. Right, let me finish the story, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I thought the rationing was a finish, mate. It can't get any worse. So I had the because sh- uh, there was a few people behind me in the queue. So you didn't ask them to buy it for you, did I you? I had the shame of being of having fourteen of the ravioli being taken off me at the till. <laughs> <laughs> did you ask the people behind you to buy it for you? Uh, well, no. Like then another the manager came over and he was like, "Oh, well." The computer won't let us do it, but we'll put it through with three separate purchases. So, the moral of the story, you can still hoard, everybody. <laughs> and and the moral of the story is that after that, they said, we would have let you do it, but uh, can we see some IDs, please, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Challenge 25, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, but, <laughs> sorry, like, you, you bring, no, you bring no, no, mate, no, no. That's a, I, I loved it. I loved it. Rachel's now realising how mad the podcast is. <laughs> Uh, I am. I've never listened to it, so it's it's nice to hear how funny. It is. <laughs> he's not right. Right. Oh, He's never. Listened. He's never listened to our own podcast. I, I I I can hear my own voice in my head. I don't need to go through it again. So um, that's yeah, why. Anyway, I, I don't want to hear your voice again, Steve. <laughs> Thanks for that. But is is there a tutorial, an online delivery for our students, bringing it to life in regards to social etiquette? etiquette and all of that, that actually we need to start covering some of those stuff because what is happening when you're seeing on YouTube people stealing off people and taking things off and and, and the hoarding and, and all this stuff with, with some of the elderly, I, I just think, is this a time to actually just bring it back and put it into the context of students and say, this is not okay, what do you think, and have some real good discussions just through a Google Meet or online? Look at you! Look at you looking for the learning and everything. It's like you're a I, teacher I, or something. I, I just think it's a great opportunity that our students will yeah. feel will be seeing this and thinking this is not okay. Let's get some really good discussions on it. Let's not put it into an exam. Let's just have some discussions about that, and that might be a real nice, simple way somebody could introduce technology into uh, into the remote learning. That just get just do it, not recording it. Let's just have a conversation about what's happening. Um, bring it to life, bring it to the context of what's going on and they're seeing, bringing real life examples back from the students and, and have a chat about it. Yeah, I think I like Definitely. it. Yeah, it's cool. And I think Dan touched on earlier about, about life after the pandemic <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, and, and what it's, and what it's going to look like. And uh, if, if, if I suppose if we could wave a magic wand, what, what do we think it would look like? Would it become increasingly uh, digital would it become more blended what what do you think i know that we all think yes that'd be amazing we'd get loads of cool training gigs and we'll be able to support people through it and it'd be like our dream to have schools and colleges doing this what, what do we think i think it's an interesting thing because having been in the schools it's it was very tough to sort of see the divide between so many schools uh, so, you know, I've gone through lots of schools, um, both being in Melbourne and in London. And the biggest sort of concern for me was just ha- quite how many t- schools were still teaching like it was the 1950s. Teacher at the front of the room, desk set out, you know, maybe one ICT suite um, and a handful of devices. And we weren't seeing it, a lot of schools sort of making a change to use technology on a daily basis. Uh, so I think, you know, without almost going there, this pandemic has actually allowed this change to take place. And I'm actually really excited to see what's going to happen when we get out the other side, because I think 
we definitely can't go back. We can't create these rich learning experiences for our students as they go remote now. And then, uh, you know, once we come back over the other side, say, well, okay, it's back to 1950s classrooms. Yeah. Um, <laughs> teacher at the front, we're going to take all of that technology away from you, all of those engaging learning experiences. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we are going to see a huge change in the use of technology in schools. Yeah, and if you and if this is successful with people doing remote learning online, how are you going to answer the question when in September when the your student says, "Why can't I just do this at home?" <laughs> like, you, you, how are you going to answer that question? You, you, if it's been successful, which I think I think a lot of schools are going to be successful, then how how like you say, how do we how do we justify just going back to normal? But 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 I think it can be a massive variation. I, I think it. I think my response would be that if a student has a potential reason why they and if the the reason why they're coming into school is that actually they could get exactly the same experience at home. When so, but you know, why would you? We need to make sure that when they come in, there's a real genuine reason. The the support, everything else is there. But also in schools and in in, in colleges in particular, and I know the demographic of of Leeds, there's. There's a massive amount of our students that have real variation in barriers. So uh, young parents, uh, parents that they um, might be ill, they might be carers, for, they might even just have a driving test. All of these reasons why they can't come in to do that learning, if they could do that remotely and continue, and I know we use the iMac and I've talked about it before, that we use 3.6% uh, of our learning is, is done through the eye, that... Actually, we're we're not doing anything different. Where we got rewarding those students because they want to learn, they want to make progress. They just can't make it in for that one element. And actually, I think it's the increase in that that I'm really excited about because some students want to learn and can't at the moment because we don't create a mechanism for them to do that, and we call them absent when actually then they don't want to be absent from learning. They just can't make it into the building. We probably just need to move away from things like league tables, don't we? They've suspended them for this year. Let's just suspend them forever. <laughs> They've suspended all offset inspections. Let's just suspend them forever. Let's just like, look, I'm not going to go there today, but maybe that's for another time. But I think like the, this is releasing us, I think, maybe to be a bit creative with our learning and yeah. and uh, it's, it's releasing us to say, do you know what? This is the 21st century. Let's yeah. do something that the skills that they're going to need. It's interesting that we're now talking about skills of communication and collaboration and create all that stuff they're doing now. And the stuff that we're saying, these are what the businesses and employees need, the jobs of the future are going to need. We're doing it. And, uh, and, and all this stuff, people laugh at me at college because they're, they're like, I bet you love this, don't you? I bet you love it that, I, I don't know, not the, the whole corona thing, but the whole effect of that we're going distance learning. I bet you love this. I bet you love the fact that people are relying on Google. And I said, well, look at how much training I've done. It's not been that easy, but actually I do love the fact that it's it's forcing a hand. Um, and I, I, I'm genuinely hopeful that it will, it will not just be a, a fad. Uh, and that people will enjoy it and people will want to do it. I'm hoping that it gets us some more trainer boot camps and educator boot camps because not 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 just webinar. for work, <laughs> more webinars. But but it, we want it to be that we want it to be the thing that 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 kind of spurns a, a bit of a revolution. And we talk about that quite a lot on Edu Futurist about this revolution. And I think it feels like the 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 snowball is starting to uh, starting to roll. And I think at this time gives teachers that freedom to be adventurous, try something different, try something you've never done and wanted to do with your students because you've got that opportunity to try it and see what happens. And there's so many people out there to support as well. You know, embrace your PLN, get on Twitter if you're not already. There's so many teachers sharing their experience um, a lot of schools that have already been closed for months are sharing what they've done, what's been successful, what hasn't worked. So there's ideas already there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and start from scratch. There is material there. You know, make sure you access it. Make sure you reach out and ask. Um, and even more so when it comes to, you know, teacher wellbeing, make sure, you know, you do reach out and check in on, on your fellow teachers as well. Yeah, and, and 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 one thing I'll say that I heard uh, a, a, a college contacted me 
Um, it was yesterday, actually. And they said, can I just ask, ask for some advice? And I said, of course, yeah, not a problem. Um, how are you observing um, online during this process? <laughs> and I just said, "Is this?" A, I was like, is this a joke? They're like, no, 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 what, what are you doing? I was like, under no circumstances are we and should you be doing that? Because people, teachers are trying their hardest and, and they're giving it their best shot. And if we don't allow them to take risks and put that mechanism in place, they will never try. This is the opportunity to learn. Try. We are doing our best for our students to try and continue learning. And you put that mechanism in and it absolutely will not happen. Because if they know they're going to get observed, why would you just not You just not do it? Because you know that if you don't do it, you're not going to get observed. It's absolutely mayhem. So to that college that contacted me, shame on you. Because you <laughs> should not be doing that. I'm not going to say who you are, but it's shocking and hopefully that is not common practice in any organisation. This is about celebrating teachers yeah, for yeah. what they're trying to achieve because they're doing an absolutely outstanding job. They're trying the best for their students and so should everybody that, that is working in a school or college. Back them. Yeah. Back them and celebrate them. That's what I say. We'll put the uh, we'll put the name of the college in the show notes. So, we definitely uh, won't. We definitely <laughs> won't. We, we, we won't. We won't. But just yeah, def, definitely. Just please, if you think about that, let us get it around. <laughs> yeah, if, if if you are thinking about doing that, just think again. Don't do it. Um, yeah. Preach it, brother. Preach yeah. it. I don't know about you, but the amount of stuff I've had to speak to this week just regarding their own self consciousness on a video call yeah. with a teacher via a video uh, by Google Meet, they, they feel self conscious about it. Um, <laughs> So the fact that within that Google Meet there could be a member of senior leadership watching them do it at the same time is just crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. T- totally agree. Um, yeah. So we, it's been great to have you on, Rachel, and uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We, as listeners, uh, we know that you're all sharing amazing things and you're supporting each other throughout the uh, community, whether that's online or whether that's in person. Um, we're, we're really grateful for the people that are doing that and we want to celebrate and shout out all the people that are doing some amazing things thank you for supporting educators and for supporting students through a, what is a really difficult time and uh, if, if we can help in any way then please please contact us we'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic if what you what you're doing we'll share that with us we'll we'll retweet that and whatever else if you've got any experience with online learning um, either previously as a student or currently as a lecturer or what's going on at the moment, please tell us what advice you give to others starting a journey with remote learning. You can tweet us at Edufuturist and uh, get involved with tweeting our partners for this podcast, text help at text help. Use the hashtag, dis- hashtag distance learning and then you'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to pull these things together. We'd love to hear from you and uh, s- support that kind of stuff. Just just on, an, on a side note as well, to mention most of you have seen that we posted out on social media and through email as well that we have postponed our Edge Future Summit and Awards for July in light of uh, the current circumstances. We are really excited that, about doing this and we are going to bring this a new date for you in the autumn. We'd love you to celebrate with us uh, and continue that. Thank you so much um, for those people who have, have sent us lovely texts and say that you're still supporting us and you're with us. We appreciate you and uh, we'll continue to build this Edgy Futures community. Maybe it's just going to be on a little bit online, uh, a little bit more than the, than we than we thought. Rachel, thanks again for joining us. Um, I don't know if you've got if, if you've got any closing thoughts. Have you got a, a, a philosophical thought to give us about distance learning to call, call oh, it pressure, out? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> quick, quick Google search. Quick Google search. <laughs> search Bing. I think the key thing is, uh, I would say, try something new, reach out, use the support that's available. And most importantly, have fun and stay connected. Thanks, right. Rachel. Yeah, and, and Rachel, we've been trying since November. We, we promised somebody from Sweden 19 would come on. And uh, it, it's great to have you as the third, apart from me, obviously, the first SWE. Sweden SWE 19 uh, <laughs> person to come on. Dan, what's yours? Do you have one yet? Oh. Two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the only non-innovator on this call, just saying. <laughs> it will be soon, and 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 we look forward to hearing Dan's experiences. Rachel, absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thanks, Rachel. I hope not that, keep that in the video. <laughs> the dancing. We can call that the edgy futurist. Um... 
We can make. I reckon we should out. make a dance. Yeah, we yeah. should have. We, we should make a dance at the end of every like episode. A t- now. Like a TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> a TikTok what? challenge. We could yeah. do crisscross and make you jump, jump, jump. jump. Chris. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. We need to stop recording. We need to stop recording before right, we go. Stop, we, we, yeah. yeah, before we go into that conversation. <laughs>